The public Android 13 beta is here, and it's our first chance to look at what might be coming in Google's next OS update. We've already learned a bit about what the company will be focusing on improving for the next version, and a lot of it sounds like back-end changes that might not make a huge impact on daily use. Android 13 is supposed to bring finer privacy controls and more themed app icons. Though there's probably stuff in the works that the company has yet to share because don't forget, Google I.O. is coming up in just two weeks. Most of the updates in Android 13 Beta 1 are barely noticeable, and many of them are developer-centric. Things like more granular permissions for media file access, better error reporting, and anticipatory audio routing aren't things that'll immediately make an impact on how you use your phone. These are tweaks that app makers will have to implement before you'll see a difference, as are upcoming features like themed app icons. Still, there are a few new functions that might pique your interest. Before I go any further, I have to warn you, as usual, that installing any beta software comes with risk of losing data. You'll be opting into a platform that might not be stable, meaning your apps might crash or they just might not work. If you're very certain you want to give this beta a shot and you're fully aware of what you're getting into, you can enroll a supported Pixel phone on Google's website and a notification will appear on the device. I signed up with a Pixel 4a and downloaded the 1.79 gig update with no trouble. One of the first things I noticed after installing the beta was the refreshed media playback box. It's taller in Android 13 compared to the one on my Pixel 6 Pro running Android 12 and uses album art as the background. Instead of just showing pause, previous, and next buttons in addition to the song title and artist, the new panel shows an animated progress bar that squiggles as the song moves along. On the card for Spotify at least, I also got options for shuffling and liking the track. This box's new layout is great. Not only does it show more information in a more attractive way, it also lets you drag the slider to fast forward through parts of, say, podcast episodes without having to first unlock your phone or or launch an app. That said, I do miss the bigger buttons for skipping a track. Also, it's slightly buggy. It said my music was playing on the Pixel 4a when actually it was playing on my Nest audio speakers. Android Police also spotted a new QR code scanner shortcut in the Quick Settings panel that launches a dedicated viewfinder. In my brief testing, this was not only super speedy, as Android Police points out, but it's much easier to use. Instead of having to open your camera, aim it at a QR code, and then try to hit the little chrome bar that pops up, you can just point this new scanner in the general direction of the symbol and it latches on instantly. A box pops up at the bottom with an open button that's larger and much easier to tap, and the viewfinder closes, instead showing an image of the code you just snapped. That means you'll no longer have to hold your phone steady while you use your other hand to try to tap the tiny, tiny link. This is definitely a more convenient way to scan QR codes, which have become more prevalent during the pandemic with businesses using them to serve up contactless menus. But I will say that on the extremely rare occasions where you're trying to scan one QR code out of a few, this is trickier to use. Since it immediately snaps a photo of the first QR code it sees, you'll have to wrangle it a bit to get the one you actually want. Some other changes include new material U themes and improvements to app suggestions in the large screen friendly L version. You can now choose from about 12 more color palettes automatically generated from your wallpaper to apply throughout the system. Now, although Android Police reports that the lock screen shortcut to access your smart home controls uh, can be accessed without first unlocking your phone, this wasn't true for me. I was still asked to enter my PIN when I tried to turn on my living room lights from my Pixel 4a. But this could be a bug and it could be working for other beta users. All told, there were surprisingly more user-facing changes in Android 13 Beta 1 than I expected, and I'm gonna need a little bit more time to dig around for some features that we may have missed. But I still wouldn't recommend anyone other than the most eager early adopter install the beta unless you scan dozens of QR codes a day. 
For now, it's still too early to tell what Android 13 is going to look like, but hey, at least it's nice to see Google is working on some thoughtful new features. For more coverage of Android 13 when it does launch, as well as stories about smartphones, laptops, tablets, and more, make sure you subscribe to Engadget. And as always, thank you for watching.